Was it you guys who commented that like Opie's always broadcasting from the beach, but like he's never with his family and he's also like never on the beach enjoying himself? Oh my god, Opie does these live streams on the beach and I was watching him and keep in mind like Opie and Anthony were like huge reason I got into doing this. Like I really that was another great man at their at their peak, like fucking nothing was funnier. And what year it, would you consider their peak? Their peak was the it, for me, everybody's different, right? My their peak was like year one and two on XM. Like right on the that's the sweet spot because they still had all the energy. They still they were coming back from being banned from New York radio and they had freedom to do whatever they wanted. Wow. And and that that to me, because around then is when they started bringing in like the Patrices and the Bill Burrs and like you're talking about Louis C.K. You're talking about like fucking huge comedians that were coming on and some of the best stuff that ever happened was on there. So now Opie is like broadcasting to 40 people when he's live and like 30 of them are people that don't like him, you know? Right. They're hate watching. But, but, but you're right. Hate watch is still a watch. That's exactly what Mersh had. Mersh brought up exactly what you said, which is like he's always at this mind you beautiful beach place that he's at it and looks expensive yeah, yeah and even his new york apartment looks expensive he lives in the trump tower he, was, he said it before we're gonna know where he lives he said it he oh, said it before right. which is hilarious because he hates trump those are like right next to are those next to the west side highway yeah he actually did an entire yeah. stream where he was talking about like well yeah you know but it's fine because it's he doesn't really and i'm like Opie, first off why do you dox yourself you moron and secondly, uh, yeah and then secondly when he's not making streams at the beach, you're he's at the beach and he's there four hours. I'm like, where's your family? Where's your kids? They're not at the. By the way, I don't believe that he should have his family and kids on the stream. But if I'm on the beach spending time with my kids where they're not at school, wouldn't you be with them at the beach and not whatever you're doing? And yeah, then, you don't have to point a camera then be like, but I'm hey, I'm here with them. They're exactly. in the background or something. But he's just mad and he's upset. But when he does his New York streams now, he just does. He literally does streams where he because he doesn't want to pay. Listen, it's so sad. He doesn't want to pay for parking at his building because it's too expensive. So what he does is on the days they're doing the street cleaning, he has to wait he and move, move his car. car. So he streams from his car waiting for a spot to open up. And I'm like, bro, you used to be one of the That's biggest That's actually endearing. Like if somebody like Gino Visconti did that, I'd be like, this is a fucking show. But right, like of course. But now when it's Opie, when it's all like, God, I'm so sick of talking about Jimmy. Uh, and I'm like, shut up. Bro. Yeah, he said he's he he claims that Jim Jim Norton stopped being talented, which oh god, I covered possible? that on the show, and I I we covered it on the show, and even Mersh was like, it's like, look, you could even accuse Jim of maybe you could even say Jim's not trying as hard. Fine, that's a criticism you could bring up, but if someone's talented, they're talented. You, you could don't say lose somebody talent, like, yeah, you could say someone is not using their talent. That's fine, but to go, he's still the same guy that made the same. Like you understand, like again. It's 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 sour grapes. It's everything with him, and I, I I'm really good friends with some people that used to work there too, like behind the scenes. And, and and when he left, and when it came out, all the people that he went behind their backs and complained to management to people that were loyal to him, wow. he was going behind their back and complaining to management. And I'm like, wow, man, you have like no loyal. No wonder you have no friends. Like no this loyalty. Is why. He was like he was carrying everyone. But like yeah, yeah, all you can do to just suck up to uh, the management to. Make sure your spot is secure. Is this yeah. true? He had his mirror stolen twice. <laughs> he has. I, I, you know that I don't know. He might have. I, I, like I said, I, I too. But you know what? Knowing him, probably. And then, and then he, then he did that. He, he, he makes these. He did that podcast where he went around and was just recording, talking to people at a restaurant. Oh and, no. But the, which again, honestly, could be a good segment if done with the right people. But he would set his microphone on the table, Christine. I shit you not. All you heard was clink clank, clinkity clank clank, clink clank. Hey, can I get some more fries? Oh no. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? You know, you used to be one of the biggest radio stars on the planet. So you think because he lived his life in a way that showed no loyalty to anyone which is why he has nobody around him now no friends to podcast with no you know old producers to like help him with his show well i mean look, look at the other cast like look at the other cast that were on the show right all these other comics that are still around still hang out with ant they still hang out with jimmy they still hang out with they still hang out with everybody else on the they don't with him so i do i know why i mean i would assume again it's because when you're somebody Opie also suffered a lot from from jealousy. I, I think that that's true. And I know a lot of people go like, oh, that, that that's always the first thing. But I really do think that because, you know, if Opie would have accepted what his role was and what he was good at, he wouldn't feel as bad. 
and 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 especially after he basically the joke on our show is he basically was so mean to Steve C that he eventually killed himself. But I mean, it's like wow. uh, you know he was really mean to he was not like the stuff he did was gross. He's a gross guy. Like he always tries to be the good guy, um, uh, but he's and he he would just resent the fact that other people around him were more talented. He would resent the fact that when like a bunch of comics were just killing, he couldn't jump in with a line because. He wasn't fast enough. And that doesn't mean you can't be a good radio guy. That doesn't yeah. mean that at all. That just means you're good at what you... Opie was good at steering a conversation. He was very good at, okay, this bit's probably gone on long enough. We got to go to a... You know, and, and that's important for a good show. I mean, you know, Opie and Anthony together will always be better than them apart. I mean, and that's just the way things are, right? Like, you can't... You can't you know, we, we can't pretend that they're not. But that being said, one of them is still doing something successful, and the other one is... And having a blast. and like, Right. And the other one is sitting in his car complaining about the other one doing something successful. Right. Right. right? And it's and, actually and called, funny. we actually call it pulling an Opie when you shut down the fun to like bring up an article. And like every time I do that, I'm like, ah, fuck, I just did an Opie, you know? Yeah. No, I know. I'm, I'm actually really, I'm very good friends with E-Rock. Um, we're like, we're, we're, I've known that guy for like. E-Rock is great. He's yeah. one of the nicest people. Like he's one of the most genuine and nicest people I've I've ever been around. And and when you get people when you when you're turning people like that on you like you're 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 the problem buddy you know like that's it yeah people people that used to that used to you look up to you so i don't know man here's what look man everybody everybody hates getting older and everybody hates getting not relevant so you can either do one of two things you can lean into it and have fun like you were saying earlier and just have fun man have a good yeah. time people will watch you'll make a career no problem don't or, try to be what you used to be like just have look yeah. at where you are now and do the best you can with it Anyway, the world that they the the world that oh, that they were good in doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Bless you. I sneezed. That world doesn't exist anymore. That world that world that they that that at, er, first two years of XM days doesn't exist anymore. Like if you try to do what they did now, who where are they going to be on? They're going to be on cozy. Like you know what I mean? Oh, what was he on Westwood One? At one oh point? my God, Westwood One. Oh my God, and he had nobody listen to him, and they fired him, and he turned it around like it was his idea. There was a moment where I was going to be on Opie's show. This was like years ago. I think it was like pre-pandemic is when Carl was still alive. And then yeah. it was, Carl was basically like, this is my first Carl, Carl, Carl. Was, a nice, was a nice guy. Very nice guy. He was a nice guy. He, he, he called me out. He said, meet me at this Cuban restaurant. I guess it was his restaurant that he was right. in, about to open. And I was waiting like hours. Like we were all were waiting for Opie. And I was, it was just, I was like, is this it? date is he trying to sneak into a date <laughs> and I, I was just in i was just in the basement or i was in the kitchen of this cuban restaurant while he's like prepping food and i was like i've been here a really long time like no one's heard from opie and i was like is this and then he's like oh well he's coming and then he like he's like let's go outside and like get something to eat or drink or whatever and then he took me to this like fancy place where they make meringues like because he was a foodie and i, and I was right. like okay never eat, eating these meringues walking back i was like i feel like i was just tricked into a date and then it was like, oh, Opie's not coming. He he's on the boat with his friends or something, or he forgot I'd scheduled this, or like oh, it just seemed like no. there was a weird communication thing. I'm like, did he actually tell him, or did I did he blow me off? And this guy was like, didn't didn't want to say don't come in because maybe he wanted to hang out. I don't know. It was confusing. And then he died, so I was like, I guess I shouldn't talk about that. Um, well, fuck, you just you just did. Um, <laughs> but no, that being that that's the best time to talk about it. Nobody's feelings get hurt. Um, I waited it, long enough. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. You waited. You waited the obligatory time. But honestly, I'll tell you, I I don't know, but it, it is very possible that Opie just forgot, or it is also very possible that you 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 were bamboozled into a date with a Cuban man. Either way, look, I'm Cuban, so it is very possible. That sounds like something I would have done at some point. But that being said, good on you for picking up on it. I'll give you that. I just was like, it's been hours. I think it was like four hours. And I was like, I don't think he's coming. Well, that, I feel like uh, dumb Chrissy, for waiting this long. Maybe he had to wait four hours because nobody moved the car and he couldn't move across the street. Did you think about that? I think it turned out he was on a boat with his friends out on Long Island. Okay, well, we know. Now we know it was a date because he doesn't have friends. So there's no way that could have been that. Wow. Or, yeah, on somebody's boat. It definitely was like yeah. boat in Long Island. It was during mm. the summer. They were good meringues. I just, you know, <laughs> it, it killed my whole day. They were good meringues. Fucking killed me. They were good. Look, they the were meringues good. were good. Okay. That was the best part of it. I was like, all right, these are pretty fucking good. But I don't know. 
it's worth my whole day. They were good meringues is fucking hilarious. Jesus Christ. And then he died, and I was like, oh. Oh, then you're sad. And then you're like, I wonder if, he's, if we could still get those meringues. <laughs> yeah, so I wonder if that meringue place is still open. I hope he give that recipe to somebody else before he it passed. Was, it was downtown. Uh, was it called Lucy's? I don't remember. I don't know. You, you, you city people are fucking weird, so. Love you guys. Thank you for the chats. Thank you for the comments. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. All right. Love you guys. God, I don't even want to leave. This candle smells so good. I don't want to leave. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Love you all. Join the Discord. Feet. Love you all. Wow. You guys are awesome. Don't even get it. Bye, guys. Bye. Now I'm really leaving. Love you. Bye.